Too sleepy people by dawn's <laughs> early light. Too much in love to say good night. <laughs> you want me to sing some more? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> we'll no, go to don't bed. Sing. <laughs> don't sing, Mom. <laughs> when you dated a woman, you went to pick her up at her house, and she was always upstairs or in the other room, and you had to go through the mother. And I found out very quickly that if I could look around the living room that I was in while the mother was talking to me, and I could see something that was an antique, I could say, oh, is that a, and I would mention what, a, what it was, <laughs> really made a great impression on the mother, so she felt it was, if I could know an antique, I must be all right. So. My sister fixed me up with her. She was down visiting a friend. I was in Boston visiting, visiting a, friend. a friend. This Lived was in, in New late York. August. And uh, my sister fixed me up with a date, so we went on a date in the middle of the week. Naturally. I wouldn't go on a blind date on a Saturday night. You just didn't do that. I was late because my friends had kept me out too long, and um, I'm usually very punctual, but. He was pacing, and I said, well, if it's too late, don't bother. I said, no, nah, we'll the forget heck? about it. And it was pouring rain, and oh, I was wearing a silk dress. Up. Wow. So we talked, literally we talked. talked for four hours. We talked and talked and, and talked. And we talked about things everything. that we loved. About everything. And then at the end Turned of the out talk, I, everything we, she liked, I liked. I love camping. Rough camping, it. and I love Shakespeare, and so did he. And it's kind of hard to find people who like things like that. Anyway, at the end of the talk, after a while, after a while, he said to me, turned to me, and he said, <laughs> "Somebody's going to marry you. It might as well be me." <laughs> I remember when my mother first saw the peanut butter pails, and she remembered as a little girl back in the early 1900s, the peanut butter coming in these pails. And then because that was peanut butter, it's a little sticky, they were thrown out. And so we consider it memorabilia of a time gone by. <laughs> so people, people will buy antiques for various reasons because they remember them they remember their grandmother had one of those, and um, the old story. The old we story. Out. We threw we out our grandmother, but we kept that. I mean, some of the antique dealers were very funny in the old days. So I grew up with with uh, a knowledge, somewhat knowledge of antiques, and a love for them, which is something my wife had too. She liked antiques. I think the first thing I remember collecting was sandwich glass, which was made in Sandwich, Massachusetts. And we collected a few pieces of that and then went on to other things. But um, we were bored and we met some people who collected advertising and they were very interesting and we got into it and uh, we liked it because it was a disappearing collection. Uh, in other words, when people would open a can of coffee, they would keep their coffee, and when it was done, they'd throw the can away. And pretty soon, uh, they became collectible because the cans were all gone, and maybe one or two were left, or five, all over the country, and we started to collect them, and I think now we have probably Three or four hundred. I don't know. We've never really counted them. <laughs> a lot of them. I got one thing here. It's an old boy gum sign that I didn't want to. For a long time, I didn't want to. There it is. This one. It's not that rare a sign, but I never wanted it. And the reason why I didn't want it is that when I was growing up, my brother and I would have a penny, and we would go and buy old boy gum, and we would each have a stick of bubble gum, the bubble gum. And this was this struck too much at home to me. This painting 
back here is interesting because the haystacks are the same size as the house. These are done by people who really had no idea of dimension or any of that and just painted what they saw and this is how they saw it. They're interesting. They're, 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 you're touching people that were maybe a, a farm lady who had nothing to do with her time in the winter and she started doing a little painting and, you, and you're touching back, you're touching to these, touching these people. And you really... Well, preserving something that they did that they were proud of because yeah. they saved it. I remember once we sold a doll and uh, my wife took it and put it in a plastic bag so that it wouldn't get wet when she went out in the snow. And the woman almost had a fit. Oh, no, no, she says, you're going to smother her. You're going to smother her. That's when we realized that dealing with dolls is a very strange bunch of people that are involved. And so we decided that's the end of the dolls. <laughs> we never dealt with them again. Well, I saw Lionel in a tiny shop and I said I would like to buy him and there was a man there and he said I'm sorry but my wife is in charge and she's not here and I said well I'm gonna be walking around and do you think that you could keep Lionel so that I could buy him when your wife comes back he said okay and I came back and Lionel was gone and I said to the man, do you have Lionel? Did you put him away? And he said, no, I told my wife about it, but that was it. So um, I was on my way out and there came the woman who was the lady in charge of the shop and she had Lionel in her hand. And I said, oh, did you keep Lionel for me? She said, yes, I knew that you and Lionel were made for each other. We started selling when we had too much stuff we collected and we had to get rid of it. And, and our kids would go along and have their own little table and they would buy and sell and they'd make fifteen, twenty dollars and be very happy with that. And um, we, we really enjoy uh, going to various antique shows when we travel. And it's fun That's meeting fun. the people and, and it's an interest that we both have. And it's interesting, the people that you meet at these shows like to talk to you. You like to talk to them and they like to talk to you. They like to talk about what they have and they're interesting. It's, it, it's a nice feeling. It's, it's like a community feeling, even though they're all in different parts of the world. I have no idea what's going on, no idea. And he finds six screws very carefully matching the sizes. And he goes, these are all the same. These are the six screws we need, right? And he says to the guy, look, uh, how much you want for these screws? And the guy says, uh, 75 cents. And Dad says, I'll give you two bits. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, fine. So he says, you got a quarter? You got a quarter? Give him a quarter. So I give him a quarter. And he says, I, where am I going to put the screws? I'll put them in this little box, okay? Can I just put them in this? He goes, yeah, that's fine. And he puts them in the little tin. And he, we walk away, and I said, what the hell is going on? Whatever. And he, we go over to a big trash can that's right there, and he dumps the screws out. He goes, you see this tin? This is a Times Square. And immediately, somebody comes over and says, Warren, hey, how you doing? He says, what you got? He says, I got a Times Square. He says, what do you want for it? And he says, uh, give me a hundred bucks. And the guy goes, will you do 75? He says, yeah. <laughs> and he sells it for $75. And I said, why'd you do that? And he hands them over $75. He gives you $75 in cash. Oh, and I you said it was worth about $150. Yeah, but, um, and I said, why didn't you sell it for more? And he said, because he's happy and I'm happy. <laughs> We're happy. <laughs> okay, and I'll tell you that if I had to get rid of everything, I would, how would I feel about it? Well, 
Oh, menus, menus. The fun was in collecting, was in finding yeah. these things, the treasure hunt. That was the thrill to me. Not only the thrill of the treasure hunt, but the thrill of doing it with my wife, doing it together. Do you agree with all that? Well, anything you obviously, add? Grandpa's doing most of the talking. What? So. Are you kidding? <laughs> no, wait I finally got a chance to speak. <laughs> no, he's been talking right along. No, I haven't. You've been doing Well, wait. You'll see. You'll see. Here we are, out of cigarettes, holding hands and yawning. Look how late it gets. Two sleepy people by dawn's early light and too much in love to say goodnight.